Hello there, I'm Brian from Swain Racing. Um, we're going to uh, be rebuilding the GM Turbo Hydromatic 350 uh, transmission today. Um, if you haven't seen the disassembly, please go to my websites and have a look. <coughs> it will uh, help you in, in assembling the transmission. So if you want to go to brianswainonline.com, swingracing.ca, or swingracing.com, uh, the disassemblies are on there for the uh, Turbo Hydromatic 350 and Power Glide and for Turbo 400. So if you're uh, not sure, just have a look there. It'll give you the, uh, the skinny on what's going on here because obviously we're starting to rebuild. So you want to make sure that you get everything cleaned up. Everything's nice and clean. Uh, you've got your seal kit. Uh, I suggest you buy a complete seal kit with bushings, clutches, seals, gaskets. Uh, make the job much easier for you. If you have any burnt steels, uh, clutch plate steels, please get them replaced. Buy new ones. If they're not burnt, you can sand them with 120 grit in a circular motion. That you can reuse them. Um, and um, also the uh, the bushings go over all the bushings in the, in the pump. Uh, in your drums, anywhere there's a bushing, in the extension housing, in the dry shell, there's two in here. Um, if, they, if they look worn, <coughs> please get them, get them replaced and um, then you'll have a real good rebuild to go by for the for years to come. So we'll get started soon, thanks. Okay, if you haven't replaced the uh, <coughs> seal for the manual shaft yet, Get a hook tool, go in, remove the spring, the spaces the uh, lever out here. Go ahead and get your 11 16 wrench. Back that nut off. That'll allow you to uh, pull the manual uh, lever out. And take the rooster comb, comb and the actuator rod off. Pull the lever out. Um, I've already cleaned mine up, but you're going to find it's going to be very rusty. Take it to take it on a wire wheel, get it cleaned up. And go ahead and get a large screwdriver, pop the seal out. There's a new seal in your kit. Get a 916 socket. Get it started in there and tap it in with the socket. Then we can go ahead and put some oil or some lube on that seal so we don't tear it. And get your cleaned uh, manual lever up, get it started in there, get the rooster comb and the actuator rod back, line it up with the rectangular hole, go ahead and get your nut back on there, go ahead and get our spring, And go ahead and tighten the nut up. So depending on what shifter you're using, I've gone ahead and put the stock one back on. If you're using an aftermarket shifter, and there's another lever you're going to want to put on there, depending on what shifter it is you're using. Next, what we want to do is do the accumulator. This can be a little bit of a chore. Um, so you've first got your piston. You want to go ahead and get your piston put in there. You've got the large spring. A lot of times these will be broken when you take it apart. Um, if it is broken, um, the transmission will experience a very harsh one-two shift. And some hot rodders uh, for street performance just leave the spring out. They don't put it back in just to give it a harsh one-two shift. You've got your seal. There's just a ledge that sits on in here, and the cover, and the snap ring. And what I do is I try to, I'm not gonna, you're not going to be able to see this. Okay, I moved the camera so you can see this. What I do is take, just take a hammer and depress that. Get that spring depressed.
and then get your snap ring snapped in. You want to make sure you'll see a hole in the back of the case here. You want to make sure that that snap ring is over that hole so when it has to be removed again you can get a, a tool in there to uh, release that snap ring. Okay, <clears throat> so we want to go through all our gear sets. Um, spin all the gears, make sure there's no excessive play in them, no chipped teeth, etc. Just inspect them all visually. Make sure the gears are in good shape. Good visual inspection of everything just to make sure there's nothing that has to be replaced. Any put shaft, any races, etc. Um, this is a direct drum. There's a sprag in here we want to have a look at. snap ring here. Take the snap ring off. Now this is a one-way clutch. As you can see it turns one way and locks the other. So you can just pin that off. And this is the spray here. Now this spray here um, is not the best of the sprags. There is a high performance model that you can use, a 34 element sprag, um, but you have to get an early drum to use it. Uh, with this drum, the 34 element sprag cannot, spray cannot be used, so you'd have to try to find an early model drum and then you can put a high performance 34 element sprag in. Um, but for this spray here, we want to make sure that these, there's rollers in here. You want to make sure that none of these springs are broken. If they're broken, usually when you pull this off, the, the rollers will fall out. And they will break down the middle, split in half. As long as it's in good shape, we can go ahead and we can reuse that. Again, put it on, it's one way, so just turn it to one, one way and lock back on there. And go ahead and put the snap ring back on. That's a drop drum. This is a forward drum. So we've got our two pistons. We'll go in our kit. That's a direct drum. There's a seal in the drum here where the lip goes up. So this drum here actually houses a seal in the drum and two seals in the pistons. And these two pistons are a different size. And if you look on the seal, um, one will say direct or forward. If you look on this one here, it's very small, but it does say direct on it. And you can tell the seal, one seal is a little bit larger than the other. The larger seal goes with the forward. So we have a lip seal that goes down on the piston. And then the inner seal also. Now this piston I've taken and had it machined. I've had it put on a uh, milling machine and I've machined it to 730 thou. So 0.730. That allows you to get more clutches in. This is the forward. 
again, we have our inner seal. The inner seals on both pistons are the same. Now that other seal is a larger seal than the drop. And there's no seal in this drum, in the forward drum. Now I've also machined, um, milled down the uh, forward piston. I've milled it down to 700. And where you measure from is from here to here. Do not measure the uh, slope part of the piston. So measure from here to here. You want 700 thou, which is just under three quarters of an inch. And that's for the forward. So what we want to do is just go ahead and put our assembly lube or dories or whatever you're using, regular grease. Bring the seals up, one in the drum, one in the direct. We're going to use a, uh, a feeler gauge to put this piston in. I suggest a 10 thou feeler gauge. Uh, the thinner the better. You can buy stock that you can actually make them out of. There are special wire installers you can buy. It's just a loop, wire loop that's on the end of a handle so that the seal doesn't get cut. I just use a 10 pound feeler gauge. Make sure you get your assembly lube on all of that seal. I'm going to go ahead and use a 10 pound feeler gauge. Start on the inside. Go around to the outside seal. Gotta work at it. Same for the forward. Okay, so I've gone ahead and lubed the seal. Again, take your feeler gauge. Start at the inside one. Just work your feeler gauge around. And that's the two seals installed in the drums. Okay, so now that you've got your um, pistons in the drums, we want to go ahead and put our springs and retainers in. Now, I happen to have spring retainers that the springs are fastened to the um, retainer itself. Um, when you put yours apart, you may have uh, come across a retainer like this with separate springs. Uh, the Pontiac usually comes with the uh, 
with the springs attached to the retainers. You can go ahead and put them on and they're a different size. The smaller goes on the height, the direct drum. The larger goes on the forward drum. And we can take our spring retainer, get them compressed with the tool, get your two snap rings out. Get our snap ring put on. Make sure it engages fully before you release the tool. Now on the forward drum it has a shaft in it. Uh, what I did was press the shaft out so I can use the spring tool. You can use uh, C-clamps on these to compress the spring retainers. They work fine. That's the forward drum. There's snap ring put on there. And that's the two drums assembled with the pistons. Okay, next we're going to um, get the uh, rear piston ready. So uh, we want to get our seals. There's one small, one medium sized seal, and uh, one large seal. Um, just be careful. There's two seals here. This is the extension housing seal. The wider seal is the uh, second seal for the for the reverse piston. Okay, now we've also machined this for more clutches, and I've machined it to 2.160. And we want to machine it from measure it from this lip here to the top of the piston. So if you want to get that machined, you can install more clutches, especially for a racing transmission. I would suggest it. So we can go ahead and get our seals installed. Large one. These are non-lip seals. They do not have a lip. And the small seal goes in the center. Okay, at this point we're going to install the rear piston. It'll only go in one way. If you look, there'll be a notch on the piston. And if you look down in the case, you'll see the notch at the 12 o'clock position down there. Right here. So we have to line that up with, with that notch.
And we can just go ahead and push that piston right in. There is no lip on it. If you just move it, you can feel it hit that notch. I just take a pry bar and go around and tap it in until it bottoms out. Okay, I've gone ahead and put the spring pack in for the reverse uh, piston. It is a complete spring pack as we used in the uh, two forward drums. Um, so now we've got to uh, just get the snap ring started in here. This is the hardest one, naturally. Just make sure you got it seated fully. Go ahead and back off that tool and take the tool off. Okay, so we're going to start assembling the back half of the transmission. We can go ahead and get our output shaft, get our um, metal washer, it's a Torrington bearing, goes on the back of the shaft, put some assembly lube on it, go ahead and stick it in the case. Before we do, we'll take our triple tang brass washer goes in between the uh, reverse carrier gear set and the uh, put shaft. We'll go ahead and take our rear carrier. And get it installed in the case. <coughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and install our reverse clutches. You can see I've uh, the steels were in good shape. I've sanded them up with 120 grit. Well, they'll only go in one way. If you look at the, the clutch disc, I'm holding it upside right. You can see this single notch here. It goes in the bottom of the case down around the uh, 6 o'clock position. You just have to get it lined up and get that first steel put in. We've soaked our clutches in oil. They're good and soaked. And they spline onto that rear carrier. So again, a second steel. Another clutch. Okay, that's the, uh, all the clutches put in. Now I was able to put five clutches in there uh, by machining that rear piston. 
Usually you wouldn't get that many in there, possibly four. But again, by machining it, we've been able to add another steel and one more clutch, which uh, can help quite a bit. Okay, so we want to uh, put our anti-clug spring in next before we put the uh, rear, uh, reverse carrier in there, or center support, sorry. Um, so you want to put lots of lube on it. You look down in the case, about the 5 o'clock position. Right in here, you'll see a little hump in the case. What we want to do is line that hump up with this right here. And the assembly lube will keep it, keep it in place. Okay, next we want to um, install our uh, low reverse uh, roller clutch or center support they may call it. Uh, what you want to do is uh, inspect this. You want to pull this race out. It's a one, like a one-way clutch in here. And you want to inspect all these springs and rollers. As you can see, there's a series of them in there. Now a good indication that there's a spring broken is uh, when you pull that center race out, these uh, rollers will fall out. So that's a very good indication you've got a, a broken spring. If you do have a broken spring, you're going to have to replace that whole assembly. Um, ours is fine, so we want to just go ahead and put our race back in. Again, turning it the way that opposite to where it locks. And then we want to you want to keep it about flush to install it and then you're going to find uh, four notches in the case one large notch right here you can see how wide it is and then uh, three other ones that are in the six nine and twelve o'clock position so naturally we can see the large the large lug here so we know where that goes um, now to, uh, to check your clearance on the uh, clutch here. If you just take a penny and lay it on top of the clutch, uh, take your anti-clug spring out, install the um, support in with the snap ring. If the snap ring installs with the support, the clearance is fine. Then you can go ahead and take the support back out, remove the penny, put your anti-clug spring in, and then uh, install the carrier. I'm going to go ahead and install it now. Now that any clung spring, you want to spread it open a little bit, make sure it's got good tension on it. There's no washers or anything in, in here. This center race is going to spline with the gear set at the back. And at that point, just take a screwdriver and, and push it down, make sure it's good and firm in there. Now, if you take go through your snap rings and find the largest snap ring there is, but twice as wide as any of the other one, any of the other snap rings, sorry. What we want to do is butt the end of it up right to, under that anti clunk spring. And I can take a couple of tries to get it right, but you can get it there and get it held in place. Then just take a screwdriver and work your snap ring around. Just like so. <clears throat> and then if you can see, it is butted up right on the curved part of the anti clunk spring. Okay, so we can go ahead and line our race up. Just shove it down. You'll see where the notches are. It's blind in here to the uh, gear carrier behind it. Then we're going to have a washer that goes on here. It's a, a four tang washer, same size as that race. Put some assembly lube on it, stick it on there. Then we can go ahead and install our sun gear. This is a large shell that you have. Now we want to go ahead and install our output carrier. Um, we don't have to worry about a washer there because if you can see there's a washer on the inside here and that will just spline into that that sun gear. Now I've got this case sitting on a uh, bench with a hole in it so the output shaft is sticking through it. 
Then at that point, we want to get our small snap ring, which is going to install right here around the output shaft where the uh, carrier goes. You're going to you're going to find that in the uh, if you watch the disassembly video, a lot of times this snap ring will go flying when you take it out. There we go, we've got it splined in there. Then we've got another washer that goes in between the uh, carrier shell and carrier. Large four tang washer. Put some assembly lube on it. And then there's also another washer that goes on top of this in between the drum. It's a three tang washer. Again, put some assembly lube on it so it doesn't move and doesn't fall off. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is the uh, direct drum and forward drum. Okay, then to install the uh, shaft back into the forward drum that was pressed out, I just go ahead and just put it in there and get it started. And then I just go ahead and take a hammer and hit it squarely. hard sound, that's when you'll see that the shaft is back in and no damage was done to the end of it. Just hit it squarely, don't hit it on, a, on an angle or mash the outer edge of it, then you just destroy it. We're going to go ahead and do the, the clutch packs now. I've gone ahead and soaked all my clutches in the, uh, for half an hour. So we're going to take all our steels, we're going to install one steel, one clutch. Now I have you reused these steels, they were in great shape. And I have soaked the clutches for half an hour. I sanded them with 120 grit sandpaper in a circular motion. See, there's no burn marks or anything in them, so you can reuse them over. If there is burn marks in them, I would suggest you replace them. <clears throat> now, the action plate I'm using for this clutch pack, which is the direct drum, is... 275. Now they do come in different thicknesses. This one is 280 and they'll run up to uh, over 300 and up to about 350. I've, al I've already went and, uh, and done the clearance on this just to save time. So we are installing that 275 in there. Now clearance in the clutch packs, we want anywhere from 15 to 25 thou. Uh, factory recommends up to 80 thou. For, for performance reasons, uh, I like to keep it around uh, 15 thou, 10, 15 thou. And then we're going to get our two snap rings. So basically the same size. The only difference is one has an angle on it. The other one has a, a sort of a lip on it. Then you can take a screwdriver and lift up on the clutch. See how much play you have. And again, as long as you have about 10 thou, that's good. I have tightened these up a little bit, but as you can see, they, they still rotate. So that's all right. So that's the direct drum. This is the forward drum here. Again, I've already done the clearances on this drum also. The clearances are the same. The only difference is, if you remember from the uh, disassembly video, there was a wavy plate in the bottom of this clutch pack. 
Uh, we are going to put it in for this application, but if it was for a street strip transmission, we would eliminate this wavy plate. We start with a steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel. Now this pack is easy to check the clearance because you don't have the piston sitting way up where the clutches are. Now a good way to do it if you want if you really want to get the clutch pack and know exactly what it is on the direct drum. Uh, do your clutch pack clearances before you put the uh, spring retainer in. And then you can uh, get at it very easily. Again, your reaction plate is the last one that goes on. And again, the differences are, if you can see the other one had an angle. These ones have little lips on the uh, snap ring. And again, I've already checked the clearances. I've got a little tent out, and I'm going to leave it at that. <coughs> so that's the forward and direct drum. Now, the way they install is the direct drum splines, clutches splide into this part of the forward drum. And there's a big Torrington bearing. It goes in between them. Put lots of lube on it. Stick it on there, and then you can go ahead and take your direct drum. Get all the clutches coined in until it's dropped right down. Like so. We just have a very small space there when all the clutches are splined in. And that's the, uh, both the clutches and the drums installed together. Now, <coughs> now we're going to install the uh, two pump outs together. I like to just spray a little bit of oil on there, on the gears. Again, if you remember when you took them apart, the tang on the inner gear goes up, or on this, in this case there's a dot, designates the up, and also a dot on the outer gear that designates up. There. Get your stator support. Line up the two halves. I like to uh, line up this part of the pump here. So it's a large area you can see. Put it at the three o'clock position. Do the same thing with the other half. Now I like to use an extension housing to set it on. Acts as a good holder. And at that point, you want to get your uh, your piston. This is the large piston here. If you remember from the disassembly, two large seals: an inner seal and an outer seal. They are the largest seals in the kit. We're going to go ahead, take our ten thousand feeler gauge, and we'll go ahead and get that it, piston installed into there. springs attached to it. Now they may, yours may have the springs separate. In that case you would have uh, small nibs that your springs would sit on, on the piston. You want to go ahead and line up the spring retainer. It will only go on one way. You can go ahead and start your bolts.
Okay, before we tighten up the bolts, we want to get our our large band that we're going to put around the outside of the two halves. Now I've went and bought two uh, gear clamps, five to six inches, and put them together. And just install that around the two halves. And that will align the two pump halves. So when you go to put it in the case, you won't have a misalignment problem. And once you've got that snugged up, you can go ahead and snug up the bolts. And you want to go ahead and torque those bolts to 20 foot pounds. Now I've gone ahead and installed the rings on here. But the uh, you're going to have either rings that clip together, or if they've never been replaced before, there will be a Teflon ring with a spring behind it, and it won't have a, uh, a serration in it. You'll have to cut it open, put a small screwdriver in there and just split it open. That's if they've never been replaced before. If they have been replaced, they will have a ring that you can separate. So you have the, you'll have your uh, thrust washer with the large tang on it. See the large tang? Fits in the pump where the uh, large groove is. And you're going to have a ring pack in your kit. It's going to be three large rings and two smaller rings. So you just take and replace all those rings. All they do is they're just like a hook type hook type ring. They just hook together. Now I like to stagger the rings and gaps away from each other. So in this case, put them a third away from each other, and in this case, 180 degrees. And then again, make sure you torque those bolts to 20 foot-pounds. Now, if you want to check the um, intermediate piston and the uh, direct uh, clutches, you can do so while, after the pump has been installed. Go ahead and install that direct drum on the stator. And then if you look on the pump, you will see the large, there's a series of three large holes from half to three quarters of an inch. If you count over, the first one is a bolt hole. The third one is the drum to check the, uh, pist the clutch pack. And the last one is for the intermediate piston. So if you, if you take a uh, air hose, now it's better to have a one with a rubber tip on it, but for demonstration purposes, I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if you can hear that, but and if you go to the last one, you see that piston applied which applies the intermediate clutches. Let go, let's blind into the, the drum here. That's where your intermediate clutches will be in between here. You'll see when, once we get the final assembly, the drum's installed in the pump. So there's a large O-ring. On the exterior of the pump, you'll find it in your kit. The biggest ring o ring there is in there. Go ahead and install that. And um, make sure you put a lot of lube on there. Assembly lube. For when we go to put it into the case. Okay, so you want to take both your drums that you have assembled. We're going to go ahead. Install that down into the transmission. Now again, we have to make sure that we get them splined in and all the clutches are, are matched up. You just have to uh, turn them around, spin them. And 
you have to have the transmission standing up to do this. When they are down, you'll see that the uh, tang where it slides into the uh, sun gear. You'll hear a very hard sound. Now once it, all the clutches do start splining, it, it does get very hard to turn. In that case, I just put a rag around it and get some vice grips. Let me just go, and there we go, it dropped right in. Now again, just lift it up. You'll hear that hard sound. That tells you that everything's splined. And if you go down and look, you will see where the lug on the drag drum interacts with the sun gear, the big shell. There should be about an eighth of an inch. It should be, that lug should be sitting about an eighth of an inch down into that shell. Okay, so now we're going to go and install the band. Um, after it's been soaked 30 minutes, the band goes in the case like this. And you'll see a large lug right here. Well, this opening in the uh, band uh, lug here latches right into that that notch in the case and then the band will just sit there until we get the valve body installed and at that point once the valve body is installed there's a uh, piston that will come up and push on the uh, push on the band like this when it applies Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put the intermediate clutches in. Um, we put the large reaction plate in first. Now I've gone ahead and sanded them up with 110 and washed them off. Now the four lugs on the right hand side of the steel, you'll find four lugs, two, and one. Now the four lugs go in the five o'clock position, they'll only fit in one way. And then you go ahead and add a clutch, and the clutch is flying onto the uh, drum here, under the direct drum. And go ahead and add another steel. Another clutch. Again, another steel. Last steel goes in. And then there's this wavy ring, same as we had in the forward drum. It goes on the top and sits right there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install the pump. Um, some people like to put a couple of studs in here to line the pump up. I rather, uh, I would much rather just go ahead and put the o-ring and the gasket on the pump ahead of time and I just put a screwdriver through one of the holes and I usually pick the hole that's left to the large lug and I just go ahead and turn it over and line up the screwdriver with that hole and I just go ahead and, and drop it in now you want to make sure that you don't break a ring here, so you want to be very careful. And just let it sit in there gently. 
Now, if you prefer putting a stud in, that's totally up to you. Uh, I just prefer doing it that way. I find sometimes the pump hangs up on the studs. And at that point, we're going to put three bolts in, in the triangle position. And then I like to go a quarter turn at a time to draw that pump down in there. until it bottoms out. I don't want to install the other bolts yet. What we want to do is we want to make sure that that input shaft turns. As long as that input shaft turns, everything is fine. If it doesn't turn, we've got to pull that pump back out and find out what's gone wrong. Either we've broken a ring dropping the pump in, the washer's out of place down inside, or something along those lines. So at this point I'm going to install the other five bolts and torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Okay, what we're looking at here is a uh, stock valve body of a 350 turbo Um The one on the right is a fully manual valve body that has been um, put together with a special kit. Also, um, you can see that there has been some machining done in this area here. Somebody has taken a mill and milled this out as per the instructions with this kit. Um, I didn't do this style body myself. <coughs> it, was, uh, it was given to me by a customer, didn't need it anymore. Um, but the instructions would have been uh, to get this milled, these two ports milled, and also uh, remove the accumulator out of the valve body here. Now if you look on the stock, this is the accumulator still. Uh, still installed. Now if you want to take this apart, this has to be clamped in a vise um, and squeezed together. There's a large spring underneath of this accumulator and then what you can do at that point is remove this C-clip after you've clamped it in a vise. Um, we're not going to do that today. I've already gone ahead and, and uh, gone through this valve body. I've, uh, the spring was actually broken in the accumulator before I took it apart. Um, so I've replaced that spring in there. Now there is a series of valves in the valve body here too. Um, I would suggest that you uh, you go ahead and, and take them all out and put put them in line, get a, a, uh, some rags, lay them out in the valve body as you pull the valves out and keep them in order. Now uh, you'll see these holes right here. These are small pins in here that hold the valves in. And to remove those, um, what you want to do is turn the valve body upside down and just press on the valve and at that point um, those pins will come out. I'm just going to show you what I mean with the pins. If you just go ahead and press on it, you'll see the pin come out the bottom here. As you can see, the pins are sticking up there. <clears throat> then at that point, you can take those pins out, pull the valves out, and uh, keep them in order, as I said, on a rag. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken all the valves out of the valve body to show you what's in there. Um, we're going to go through the valve orientation here. Um, what we have here is a pressure regulator valve. Um, this is the pressure regulator spring. Um, in the... Um, 
sleeve here, we have a reverse and modulated boost valve and an intermediate boost valve. Now they're just, they just sit in there. This little valve is the same on, on both ends. He just sits way down in the end here. And then this boost valve just fits into the sleeve here. Um, next we have the 2-3 shift valve. 2-3 shift valve spring. Then we have the 2-3 control boost valve and spring inside of here. There we have the small spring which pushes, on, pushes the valve back. Okay, uh, next we have the 1-2 shift valve and the 1-2 uh, 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 control valve in the uh, sleeve. It also has a return spring in it. Um, and then next what we have is the um, manual low control valve which is here with the spring. This is just a small plug that goes in the case. It just pushes on the spring here. And then the next valve we have is the uh, detent regulator valve and uh, valve, spree, uh, valve seat and spring. As you can see, uh, the pin just fits on the outside of the spring here. There is no, no plug. And then uh, it's just a little cup that the spring sits, sits on. So that's all your valves. Um, then you have your detent valve your kick down valve which is for like your passing gear um, so you just want to take that all apart clean everything up good clean the valve body out good and uh, make sure there's no debris in there okay so we'll go ahead and assemble <coughs> assemble the valve body or the uh, valve body back together um, to get these valves out you may have to use some uh, needle nose pliers Now you want to line up your uh, your sleeve where the pin goes in there and this one it goes on the left hand side and you just go ahead and push it in against the force of the spring and then uh, get your pin push on it and it'll just drop right in there Again, make sure you line up your where the pin goes. Now these can be tight, so don't don't be afraid to put a little bit of force on them. Give them a twist here and there. Now this one can be tricky because there's no plug on the end. It's just a spring. What I try to do is get my thumb in there, get it down to get the first part of it engaged. And then just take a screwdriver and go ahead and put your pin in. And that's the valve body. Okay, and there are differences in the separator plates also. The separator plate is a stock 350 turbo automatic.
The middle plate is um, a B&M shift kit that I purchased for this 350 turbo. It comes with a special separator plate. And then I showed you the manual valve body before. As you can see, there's not very many holes in that separator plate. Uh, it doesn't use any check balls at all. Where the stock and this valve body here, uh, depending what, ap what application I'm going to use, there's, uh, there's a heavy duty application I can use or a street strip application I can use in this in this kit. Um, we're going to be using the street strip application. You only use check, two check balls in, the, in that application. Where in this manual valve body, uh, there's no check balls at all. Everything is fully manual. Now I just wanted to show you something about this manual uh, valve body that we have here. Um, you can see hopefully that there's there's no valves in, in these at all. The two three shift valve and the one two shift valve are removed. And as you can see they've just plugged the holes. and put no valves or springs or anything in there. Now again different applications for each kit are different so you have to follow the instructions for every kit. Okay, I just want to show you the B&M kit that I've, uh, I've purchased for this 350. Um, it's part number 30262. Uh, again it has three applications uh, heavy duty or street strip. Um, now it comes with the instruction manual, the separator plate, a new O-ring for the um, accumulator in the case. Um, in this application, uh, you might remember from the uh, when we started putting the case together, we put the spring in the accumulator. And I explained to you that you, some uh, some people like to leave the spring out for a harsh one-two shift. Well, this kit wants us to remove the spring, and it's given us a new O-ring to put around the cover. A drill bit to drill out which holes we need, depending on what application we're doing. Uh, a couple of spacer plates and two gaskets that come in the kit. Okay, so the first thing it wants us to do is remove that spring. So I've gone ahead and put a, a pick in the hole in the back where the snap ring is. We'll just maneuver this snap ring out. And we take our cover off. Okay, all he wants to do is take this spring and leave it out. Now I have already replaced it, this with the new O-ring. We're just going to go ahead and put that back in and uh, install the snap ring. Now with no spring in there, it's very easy to get the snap ring in. Um, not like having the spring, the spring pressure against the uh, the cover when it's uh, the spring is in there. You just want to get your seal back in there and uh, get it secured around the cover and put that snap ring in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put our intermediate servo in here for the band. Um, now, if you don't remember how it went, we have the pin with the tapered part that goes down and applies the band, so it goes down. And there's a flat washer goes on, sits on the ridge on the pin, and you have the piston. Uh, it goes on the piston uh, on the shaft with this part down. As you can see, there's two notches in the top part. Well, that goes up, so we go ahead and install that on the pin. Then there's a spring retainer cup. It goes on the bottom of the pin, and then the spring, and then it goes into the case. Like so. Um, now I want to, uh, in this kit, um, we were lucky enough to get a couple, a couple of uh, filters that uh, usually don't come in the kits, but this kit happened to have them have it come in it. Um, this is this filter here um, goes in for the uh, pump. It goes, you'll see a hole 
up in this area here and that just the flat part goes down so the tape the point goes towards the bottom or sorry to, to the top and then just go ahead and sits in there um, second one is for the governor and it goes in the back hole in the um, in the case right here it's just a long cylindrical filter and that's for the governor it just goes ahead and pushes in the case now as I say you may not get it in your kit but this kit have to come with them so I'm going to go ahead and use them um, next what we want to do is uh, go ahead and get our separator plate ready uh, in this kit they want us to uh, drill two holes um, if you look here and here um, I've gone ahead and drilled these holes out with the uh, supplied drill bit. They give you a 3 16 drill bit in the kit. So I've gone ahead and drilled these two holes out to 3 16 taken a fine file, filed the burrs off, sanded it with some memory cloth to get all the nicks out of it. And um, that's the only op application we have to do to this for a street strip application. Uh, there is also a heavy duty application. Um, but it's a different hole that has to be drilled. So just go ahead, whatever kit you're using, follow the instructions um, to a T and you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so before we go ahead and put any uh, of our gaskets on, uh, we want to go ahead and check uh, which check balls we have to use. Uh, for the street strip application, uh, they only want us to use one check ball. Normally there's four check balls. Um, one would go here you'll see the little pocket where the ball sits one would go here another one would go here and the fourth one goes up at the top right here you'll see where the little pocket is for this application for the street strip they only want us to use one check ball in uh, this location right here so that's what we're going to do uh, then they want us to go ahead and just apply a little bit of grease this is just going to hold your gasket on there so you can get everything situated. I just put a little bit of grease on there just to hold it. Now there's two gaskets. Uh, you're going to see uh, both gaskets here. You see this of a, uh, kind of a Z cut in the one gasket. That is the uh, upper um, gasket that goes on top of the separator plate. The one without that Z pattern um, is the one that goes right on the case itself. So we want to go ahead and put that gasket on there. Then we'll go ahead and get our separator plate. I go ahead and put a little bit of grease on it also and just get your separator plate put on there. Then we'll go ahead and add a little bit more grease up to here to hold the other top gasket on and then get your last gasket situated on there now the spacer plate we have a stock one and then we have two that came with the kit and what they want us to do in this application is to go ahead and put this silver one on first then they want us to put the gold one on that came with the kit both of these came with this kit and you'll see this this has a slot for a fluid transfer here and then they want you to go ahead and put your whoops sorry and then they want you to go ahead and put your stock separator plate over top of that and then you're going to find that you're going to have uh, seven short bolts that go ahead and get those all situated in there now if you're doing this in a car um, you could always just go ahead and put a bolt in the center just to hold everything in place while you get the valve body up in there so I've gone ahead sorry and found our uh, our five uh, seven bolts sorry for the uh, spacer plate I just used a uh, pan bolt to hold it in place there for a moment. Now you don't want to tighten these down, you just want to leave them loose. Because we still have to go ahead and get our valve body bolts in there. Okay. 
You just put them in loosely. The other thing I want to mention is the one check ball that we did put in. It is a steel check ball that came with the kit. Um, when you took it apart, you probably found neoprene balls that were in there, uh, four of them. Um, of course, in the kit, the steel balls come with the kit. Uh, I suggest using those. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put our valve body on. So you want to go ahead and get your manual valve. You're going to have an S-link that hooks onto the valve and also hooks into the hole in the rooster comb. So at that point, we just want to hang on to everything, get everything lined up, go ahead and get the S-clip put in. And then go ahead and lay your valve body down. Now, there's going to be, the servo piston is going to be pushing up on it. You just kind of push down on it and get one bolt in, lined up, and just snug it up by hand. Then at that point, you can go ahead, get all your bolts put in for the valve body, um, except for the detent roller. The detent roller goes in this bolt hole here. And just go ahead and put some tension on it and get it started in there. All the other bolts, uh, just go ahead and get them all started. And then we want to torque them all to 100 inch pounds. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and put our uh, D10 actuating lever in for our kick down cable. Um, so you've got your, your lever with the long rod that goes ahead and attaches to your kick down cable up in the top of the case here. That will go up and, uh, and hook onto your carburetor. Um, I would suggest you install it so that the this end here is facing outward on the case. It will be a lot easier to connect the cable to when you, uh, when you put the cable on. So we just go ahead and slip, slip that through the case and the, the hole in the case where the cable goes. There's a hairpin like clip. Go ahead and clips in that lever. Like so. Now, and in turn, that when you hook your throt your pressure uh, throttle cable up to here, that will uh, actuate as a passing gear. It also regulates your shifts, also. Okay, we just want to recap here. Um, so we've got our valve body put on. Uh, don't forget your detent spring. Um, get all your bolts put in for the valve body. Um, start from the center, work your way out, get them torqued to 100 inch pounds. Same with the spacer plate. Don't forget any bolts. All it takes is one bolt, not tight, and you're going to have a pressure leak in there. So make sure you go over them a couple of times. Make sure you don't forget any. Um, so we hate to have that happen. Um, then we want to go ahead. We can go ahead and put our filter on. Just two screws that hold the filter on here. You want to go ahead and put a little bit of grease to hold the gasket in place. It's acceptable. Go ahead and snug those two screws up. So we're basically uh, all done inside here. We're, we're, uh, we can go ahead and put our pan gasket on and get our pan and get all the pan bolts put in. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and install our governor. Um, this is the governor valve here. It goes in the case here and is blind onto the uh, output shaft. What you want to make sure is that the valve inside is totally free. Okay, as I was saying, just make sure 
If you can see that valve in there when you put the fly weights together, you see that valve moving? As long as that valve moving, that's good. You can go ahead, wouldn't even hurt to put a little bit of oil on it before you put it in. You can go ahead and put your governor in. Get your uh, governor for the cover for the governor. Small O-ring goes on there. You can go ahead and tap that that governor in, cover into place. I like to use a punch. Tell by the hard sound that it is bottomed out. And then there's a very large clip that goes on. Uh, there's a small hole in the top of the case here that it fits into. And then it's you can just go ahead and snap it, snap it in at the bottom, like so. It just keeps the cover from falling off. We'll go ahead and we have to uh, put our speedometer gear on the output shaft. There's a small clip that holds it on the shaft. Um, you see the little, the little tang on it. It goes into the hole in the output shaft here. And then you just take and slide that gear. Hold the spring tension down on it and then just go ahead and the screwdriver and just uh, tap it on and then you'll see the little tang come up and lock it on okay so we want to go ahead before we put our extension housing on put our uh, open shaft seal in uh, there is a uh, <clears throat> feed hole here in the back you want to make sure that that is not plugged up your bushing is good. There's your bell ring for the extension housing. And have your speedometer pinion goes on the left side. And then you have your four four bolts. This one actually had studs on it for a bracket that came off of the right side for the exhaust. I'm going to go ahead and put them back on. You can see there's a stud type bolt here. You can go ahead and tighten all those up with the 916 socket. <coughs> okay, to continue on, uh, we're going to go ahead and put our modulator in. This is a modulator valve. Um, it fits in the case. Um, small end first. You'll see uh, <coughs> this end goes in first into the case. You want to put a little bit of oil on it before you put it in there. It just slides in the uh, hole where the modulator goes. And you're going to have your modulator. This is an adjustable one. You can actually put a screwdriver, a small screwdriver in the end. If you turn it <coughs> clockwise, it'll be later, harsher shifts. If you turn it counterclockwise, it'll be uh, earlier, softer shifts. So it is an adjustable unit. Make sure you have the O ring on it, it comes in the kit. I painted it up just to make it look a little nicer. You have your bracket, holds the modulator in, 